Let's hit it. And welcome to Alzheimer's Speaks Radio. I'm your host, Lori LeBay, and I'm so excited that you're joining us today. We are going to have a fascinating conversation, as usual, as we learn from people all around the world at all ages and stages of life. Stay tuned as we shift our dementia care from crisis to comfort. Here we go. What you think about? And welcome back to Alzheimer's Speaks Radio. I'm your host, Lori LeBay, and I hope you enjoyed our opening music. It's called Clarion Call by the Mark Arneson Band that features my adore. And if you want to download it, you can just go to any of your favorite music platforms and do so. I find it a really upbeat kind of fun song. I also want to give a shout out to all of you that are new to our show. Um, Alzheimer's Speaks Radio is just one of the things that we do here. But the radio show and all of our other platforms, our blog, our YouTube channels, our training. I like to say we're about sound information, not just sound bites. We want to have real conversations with real people. And our goal is to raise all voices big and small. So that means including those diagnosed, uh, those that care and serve them, advocates, researchers, and more. Um, of course, I would be amiss if I didn't say thank you to our listeners. Your likes, your clicks, your shares, your loyalty have meant so much to us, and you've really helped share our work all around the world. So again, I just really want to thank you for that. I hope you'll continue to like, click, and share on Facebook and Twitter and YouTube and uh, any other place that, that you are out there, because we all have people in our sphere that are dealing with this that might not have come out yet. They're just not ready to talk about it. But we need to make them feel comfortable to reach out to the information when the time is right for them. And so building that sense of community and that collaboration through our likes, clicks, and shares regarding dementia information is really critical, I believe. And that's the way we're going to win this battle against dementia. Now, today's conversation I'm really, really excited about because we are going to be talking about something that I don't know why it wasn't developed earlier. And it's called the Foot Bar Walker. And the Foot Bar Walker was created by two friends who wanted to help out two other friends. And so it really was about meeting the needs. But before I introduce you to our guests, I always want to give a shout out to a few companies. So one of them is Coral Health. Coral Health has a couple of apps. One is called Music First and the other is Coral Faith. And you can go to CoralHealth.com and at the very top, it'll say COVID special. Just click on that. And during COVID, you can download their apps free. One is music and then one is religious based, um, which I think you'll really enjoy. The other uh, organization I want to shout out to, of course, is the Memory Cafe Directory. Dave has done such an amazing job with this, and I wish the memory cafes were around when my own mother had dementia for 30 years because she would have really thrived in a group like that. So go to memorycafedirectory.com, find one that's by you, or if, you know, right now people aren't getting together um, physically, so there are still quite a few uh, memory cafes that you can choose from that are virtual and it doesn't make any difference where you live to be part of a group and with people on a similar path to yours. So again, go to Memory Cafe Directory. Last, I just want to give a shout out to the Gain Alzheimer's Trial. This is a trial for people 55 to 80 years old that are diagnosed with mild to moderate Alzheimer's disease and that have um, a care partner or a family member or friend that's willing to attend study visits with them. So let's go ahead and introduce you to our guests today. Like I said, we're going to have a really fun conversation. I have talked with these guys quite a bit, and it's just really been a very, very fun experience and very enlightening. So first, I want to introduce to you Gary Morris, who is retired from the Tennessee Valley Authority 
and he was a firefighter for nine years and EMT for five years as well. He presently is the COO of GAN, and he is a jack of all trades, and he has always been really innovative. Before I pull him in, I want to just uh, introduce you to Nancy as well, because they're going to be on the same screen. And Nancy Morris is currently the CEO of their company, and she was in finance, banking, and purchasing. Nancy retired back in 87 to become a stay-at-home caregiver to family members for several years. Both of their mothers um, have passed from Alzheimer's disease and both Gary and Nancy understands the toll that it takes, not only on the patient, but the caregivers as well. So welcome Gary and Nancy, how are you guys doing today? We're fine, thank I'm you, how are you? I'm doing good, doing good. I'm gonna go ahead and introduce your sidekick today, Peggy, and then we'll pull her in. Peggy is 91 years old, and she is the widow. Her husband, George White, of Danville, Kentucky, passed away. He was World War II Navy vet, and they were married 71 years. That is just amazing to me. Before he passed last year, they had six children, 10 grandchildren, and two great, great uh, grands are expected this fall. Uh, so there's another delivery in the works there. Peggy has been really active in her church and in civic and cultural organizations. She owned two antique stores in Danville for over 10 years, and she was an avid golfer and tennis player. Uh, Peggy and George love to travel, and today we're going to be talking with Peggy regarding her role as a care partner to her husband, George. Hi, Peggy. Welcome to the show. How are you doing today? I'm very well. Thank you, Laurie. Good. You. I'm really excited to have this conversation. First, I always ask every one of my guests if they've been personally touched by dementia. So, Nancy, I'm going to go to you first, and then Gary, and then Peggy. Yes, my, my mother had Alzheimer's. Uh, she uh, was diagnosed when she was 86 years old and she uh, had it for seven years. She passed away in 2002 at the age of 92. Okay, that great. Was, that was my direct touch with Alzheimer's. Okay, how about you, Gary? Well, my mother also was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. She was diagnosed in 2006, and she lived with it for seven years, and uh, she was 75 years old at the time, and she actually passed away in the 2013, she was living in a nursing home at the time. Okay, great. Thanks for sharing. And Peggy, how about you? Have you been personally touched? Uh, very much so. My mother-in-law had it and was in a nursing home for eight years now, and then my husband had it, and I, had, I took care of him for four, and he had Lewy body dementia, and now my sister-in-law, his sister, has it and she's in a facility in Indiana. Okay, so we've all been touched by this disease and I am, I am like so excited and so honored to have this conversation with you guys because I think you really come up with a, a, a cool tool that I'm shocked no one thought of years ago um, because it's gonna, it's gonna help families, uh, both patients and care partners and um, professional uh, health partners as well. Um, in this. So Nancy, uh, why don't you talk about the foot bar walker concept and why the heck did you come up with it? Well, I like to say that love and friendship built the first foot bar walker. Uh, Gary and I were friends with George and Peggy and had been for several years and we just enjoyed their company so much that they would come to our home and we would go to theirs and even go to Florida to see them. But um, in 2013, um, George was diagnosed with the Lewy body dementia and we had not visited them in about three months and he was going through uh, also recovering from a third hip replacement. At that time he was 88, she was 86, but the shock was we could tell the toll that it was taking on Peggy and um, it just broke our hearts because we know they had a love story of a marriage and she was giving it her all. But it was too much for her. And Gary and I talked about it um, on the way home and he tried a few little experiments even while he was there with them to see if his idea might work. And 
So we came back home and Gary took it on as a new retirement project. He had just retired. And um, so that's why, and, and he would have to tell you more what he did, but that's why we did. It was just something we wanted to do for friends and make one for them. Wonderful. Well, Gary, why don't you tell us how you came up with the idea for the foot bar walker? And, um, you know, you, Nancy had said, you know, you could see the toll it was taking on, on Peggy and George. And I know you've got a background kind of technology and innovation and a plus, you know, with the uh, firefighting and EMT. And I mean, you're used to that whole care aspect as well. So how did you come up with the idea for the foot bar walker? When we were visiting George and Peggy, I noticed that George would reach out in front of him to get uh, a hold of something that he could pull up with, the back of a chair or even a pull bar if there was one available. I saw that he could do that relatively easily. The problem was the pull bar was never where he needed it. It was always in the wrong location in the bathroom or uh, somewhere else in the room where he might be sitting. So my thought was, how could I take something stationary and make it portable and still make it stationary? <laughs> so when I got back to Paris, which is where we live, I started, I called myself a tinkerer, I guess, but I went to my workshop and started trying to apply it to something that was common and the most common thing was a patient walker. I built a top bar for it and I started on the path of trying to make it self-sufficient so that George could use it by himself uh, with no one's help and the problem was it would either slip or it would tip over. There was always just a little problem with doing that it worked as long as someone was holding along with him on the top bar. So some time went by, a lot of trial and error and back to the drawing board, so to speak. And I went in one afternoon and Nancy and I would always brainstorm whatever idea we, we had, we would talk about it and try to figure out the next best thing. So finally, I guess she'd had enough. And she said, uh, what Peggy needs is something right here between these two front legs that she can put her foot on and hold the front of this walker down. Now go build it. <laughs> so I went back to the shop, like I was told, and uh, we kind of use it as our inside joke that she put her foot down. <laughs> but what I realized was if I make this stationary, it will be in the footpath. So my dilemma then was how can I make this to operate and still remove it from the footpath. We came up with a rotate, rotation idea so that when Peggy would release it, in the case of Peggy and George, it would automatically go back up and retract to an upright position so it was out of the footpath. So that's how we managed to turn something stationary into something portable and still be stationary. Well, it's a brilliant idea because you're <laughs> you're leveraging the care partner's body weight to hold yeah. it down. So, I mean, that, you know, that's nothing to step on something um, versus that lifting and trying to maneuver and how uncomfortable it is for for both parties. I just think this is brilliant on, on so you. many so many levels. Now, do you have patents for the foot bar walker? We actually have two patents. We have the first patent, which uh, ended up, it's called a parent patent in the patenting process. And we did a continuation and it became the secondary patent and they refer to that as a child patent, which ties it to the first patent. And uh, we actually have a trademark, which foot bar is a registered trademark. And we're also registered with the Food and Drug Administration, the FDA. No, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't imagine that you had to be a food and drug. I'm thinking walker, it's not food, it's not drugs. So I'm kind of surprised at that one. You have to be though. You have to be registered with FDA to sell a medical product. Like that. Okay, okay, good to know. Something we I didn't have to learn it all, Lori. <laughs> <laughs> 
So Gary, you, you've kind of explained the foot bar walker and, and how it works, but can you elaborate on it a little bit more in terms of, uh, in terms of the physics of it all? I mean, is it really just as simple as, you know, Peggy holding on and, and pushing down with the foot and then George being able to pull himself up? I mean, it sounds so simple. Again, that why, why isn't this out here already? Like anything else where physics is involved, once you understand the how, it's all simple. It's the nature of it itself where the complexity kind of starts. And this was explained to us by a group of engineers that it was applied physics. The applied physics on the top, where the top bar is, it's a two-part uh, process, the top bar along with the foot bar. But the top bar uses an opposing force. There's a little saying in, in physics, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Well, the action, in the case of George and Peggy, George would pull on the top bar, and Peggy would have her hand on the top bar as well, and offer an opposing force. So that's where the action reaction comes into place. If George was to pull, say, five pounds of pull, then Peggy would automatically pull five pounds too, and it turns the pull into zero. Accompanied by the foot bar, when Peggy uses her body weight, a little less than half of her body weight is actually applied to the foot bar. But we realized that as the pull starts, the force on the foot bar actually increases. We proved this with a scale underneath the foot bar. And as this pull starts, that in the case of George, the weight would actually increase. In other words, it would increase by several pounds, which exceeds half of, half of her body weight. And you, the, the caregiver doesn't feel it. It's just a natural law of physics that takes place so this combines two or three different items that are taking place all at the same time. Okay, great. Um, Peggy, I want to go to you because, you know, you, you guys were the guinea pigs with all of this and you were the inspiration behind, behind the foot bar walker. How did it make a difference in your lives? And, and what did it feel like to have your friends create something so special just for the two of you? I cannot praise it enough and I would tell you that it is the most marvelous equipment I have ever had the opportunity to enjoy. And George just, he was just able to get up out of everything. We used it in and out of the bed. You, you can go down with it as easy as you can come up. It's as much for the caregiver as it was for him. And it just did wonders. Saved my back and I was able to just give him all the care in the world for almost four years. Now I would imagine prior to that, you were trying to help lift him up when he, when there wasn't a bar or some something for him to leverage there? You're absolutely right. It was really difficult for my back and also it made him sore under his arms. But I'll tell you, that just revolutionized my care of him. You can't imagine, Laurie, what it did to help me and him. And we took it everywhere with us. Well, and when you feel better, you care better. You know, versus I, I could imagine there might be some times where just stay there <laughs> because you just didn't have it in you. You know, that extra boost of energy sometimes to, to help get them out. Or if, you know, you can twist and turn and hurt yourself so easily. I mean, I, I just turned 60 and it's like I had a problem with twisting two ribs. I'm like, I didn't even know you could twist two ribs, you know, and then I pop something out of my neck and it's like, what's going on? <laughs> you know? well, this is just fabulous. Have you tried it at all? Have you seen it? Yes, yes. They sent me one and actually I had a granddaughter the very next day who twisted her ankle. And so she was trying to figure out how to get around and how to get up and and so we used it, and it worked really, really slick for her. Really amazing. Yeah, it really was. Did you find that you used it a lot? I think sometimes people think, oh, it's just a walker, it's to or fro, but I don't think people realize how often, when someone has a walker, how often they're using it. Well, I know there were days that maybe even before lunchtime, I would have already used it like 10 times, you know, getting him up out of bed and into the bathroom and up and down everywhere we we went in the car with it it folds up went go right behind the seat you know it was easy to handle and 
I, I just can't praise it enough. I think sometimes it's undervalued and I can see this not only for families but for commercial use in in healthcare. They're always worried about somebody getting hurt or um, you know staff getting hurt trying to help somebody else up and and this uh, you know applied physics just alleviates that and and makes it so slick to be able to care and assist somebody and yet let them feel independent at the same time. Very true. Because I would think as, uh, you know, and I don't know if George ever said anything, but, you know, it would be hard to, to be so dependent on somebody all the time. And just even to not have to have somebody physically lift you up, but to be able to do that yourself, even though they're standing there and they're, they're stepping on the, the foot bar and they're holding it in place, there's just this strength building and this, I would think, feeling of independence. Did you, did you notice that with him at all, or did he make any comment on that? Well, we had many opportunities to use it in so many different, you know, types of convenient uh, places, like uh, even at a restaurant, and uh, there would be people that would be just looking at us, you know, they'd say, in fact, in one restaurant, we were in Frankfort, Kentucky, and had gone with the church group, and I could take him on the church bus, you know, with it and everything. And this lady said to me, she said, I've never seen anything like that. She said, where'd you get that? And I said, well, this is the only one in the world. <laughs> at that time, Nancy and Gary had not invented any more, and they'd never gone into getting a patent or anything. In fact, I was the one that encouraged them to do this. I said, it has revolutionized my care. I said, everyone is interested in it that has seen it. I said, you all just got to get this patented. It needs to be on the market. And that's why we need this publicity today. We need to have people know about this walker. And without the foot bar, it wouldn't work. It would just be a standard walker. It's the genius of Gary and Nancy that make it such a fabulous, you know, piece of equipment. I right. said, I just Our have to tell you about it. And this woman said, well, my mother needs one of those. She said, I just have a terrible time getting her up. And she said, I take care of her all the time. I'm just out with my friends today. And then another one spoke up and she said, well, my aunt could use something like this. So I can't tell you how much it would mean to so many people and for the caregiver and for the patient, there isn't another piece of equipment on the market like it. I agree. You know, one of the things I, I want to talk with uh, Gary and Nancy about, because our, our show focuses primarily on caregiving and dementia, and yet your foot bar walker it covers all kinds of diagnoses. And sometimes people think, well, it's just for the person with dementia, but it, you know, sometimes the care partner needs assistance too. I mean, you never know what somebody's situation is. So can you, can you guys tell us what are some of the other types of issues that um, people are living with that you found the foot bar walker to really be beneficial for them? Well, um, I can give you one example with an Alzheimer's patient. Um, in particular, uh, I went to a nursing home to demonstrate the walker to the people, and uh, the administrator said, uh, we've got one patient here that we just have the hardest time getting her up. Her, her dementia, just she just does not comprehend the getting up. And um, it was kind of like, if you, will do, if you will get this lady up, we'll buy a walker. So I went over in front of her, and I actually reached over and got her hand and put it on the top bar and reached over and got her other hand and put it where usually I hold in the middle and the patient would pull, but I actually gently reached and got her hand. And then I looked at her right straight in the face and I started gen just gently pulling her to get her to come with me that way. And the thing just worked like a charm and she understood and she just stood right up. And they said, sold, we'll take one. <laughs> uh, that, that was a, an Alzheimer's patient. And I, like we, you and I have discussed, that tactile touch sometimes may be what they need more than someone that uh, doesn't have dementia, you know, in the mind. Um, we've had, um, we had one lady that had a condition called transverse myelitis. And uh, she was a young person, really, in her 40s. But... Um, she was struggling to get up from a seated chair. And uh, 
with, with the walker, she could just pull right up. Um, she told me, she said, it's just given my life a whole new meaning. I can take it with me to work. She said, I take it with me to a restaurant. I can get out of the car with it, take it to a restaurant. And if I need help getting up, I'll just say, hey, guy, come over here and stand on this for me so I can get up. So she saw it not as even needing a caregiver to live with her. She would just solicit a caregiver, you know, to help her up. And I thought that was interesting. Um, we had a patient the other day, 87 year old lady that had a broken femur bone and they were using it in a uh, adjoining county hospital in physical therapy. And it was the only way they could get her to get up. And uh, the family was facing putting her in a nursing home when she got out of the hospital. And that was very distressful for them because they did not want her mother their mother to go to the nursing home, especially with the COVID-19 problem that's going on. And um, they came to our factory and actually bought ones and they took their mother home and they were going to be able to take care of her because she could stand up using the foot bar walker. People with amputated legs, you know, uh, you can stand up with one leg. Stroke patients, there's just um, a variety of people that have benefited from it. But, you know, we're, we're a small company and product recognition is uh, lacking, but uh, we feel like once, the, once a person gets the walker and tries it, they're going to see it's so much more than just a walker. It's a portable pull bar and it works for both the patient and the caregiver. <laughs> yeah, really does. Gary, anything you want to add there as far as uh, the different people that it's helped? A friend of mine, called us one day and he had retired and I didn't realize he had gotten into the physical condition that he was in. And we were going to demonstrate it to a retirees group, some of the people that I retired with. So he said, well, could you come by my house when you get through and let me see this thing that you've come up with? Well, I didn't realize, but he had been debilitated for almost three years. And when we went into his home, it was he and his wife were together. She had just finished chemotherapy for cancer treatment. And he had early signs of ALS. They hadn't made a firm diagnosis, but she, she did have bone cancer, bone marrow cancer, and she just finished her treatments. So we tried this and it was difficult at first, but after two or three attempts, she was actually using the foot bar walker to help him up and he'd been having to have, he had permanently a gate belt on and she was continuously pulling on the gate belt and it was tearing her back up, even with her just finishing this cancer treatment. But when we left the home, she walked out on the little front porch that they had there. And I looked in the window and he was sitting in there with his head in his hands crying. And I went back in and I said, uh, are you okay? And he says, you have no idea you've given us our life. <laughs> oh, make me cry. Well, yep. it kind of bothered me emotionally too, but I just tried to console him a little bit. And he said, I have felt so bad okay. about what it was doing to my wife. He said, you have no idea. Oh, I can, I can believe that. I can see this with Parkinson's and I mean, it's just really endless um, hip and knee replacements, all of that kind of stuff. People getting up and around. I know we were talking um, off camera about even, you know, therapists and, you know, being a little hesitant in terms of using this and letting people get up instead of kind of getting up and then having to scooch over sideways. It just, I mean, that's an extra, in my mind, an extra hazard to have to put a person through instead of when they're trying to rebuild their strength, just being able to go up and forward and stuff. Um, I, I just, I, I think it's amazing. Now, uh, I know that um, there have been other people who, and, and Peggy, and I believe you, you did this too, where you actually use the foot bar walker as a, a source of um, exercise for George. Sometimes I've had him just one time after another, just pull up eight or 10 times, you know, because it gave him upper body strength. And uh, it was just a wonderful exercise piece of equipment also for him to do that. And then one time, uh, one of his cousins came to visit and Mike was rocking on the sofa and I could tell he was having trouble, you know, getting up. And I said, well, I'll get you up, Mike. And he said, you can't get me up. 
And I said, well, watch me. And George was sitting over very close and the walker was right there. So I just wheeled the walker over in front of mine. He said, I weigh 248 pounds. I said, well, watch me. I said, now you put your hands here. And I said, now you just pull. He came up like a dream. You can't believe it, Lori. His eyes got so big. He said, I can't believe this. And I said, well, this is the beauty of this piece of equipment. I said, it's not a strain on me. It hasn't injured my back a bit. I said, it didn't make any difference what you weigh. I said, I could get you up without any effort. And he was really impressed. It was really fun to see. And George just laughed at the storm. That was the first time I'd seen him laugh in about a month. <laughs> <laughs> well, and how, how nice, I mean, to, to be able to give people that freedom of, you know, not having to be so dependent or feel guilty that you might hurt somebody while they're helping you. I mean, that's just got to be a tremendous load to carry and worry about and um, to, to alleviate that it allows people to get back to their, their core of their relationships, which is really, really important. Absolutely. Um, now, Nancy, I want to talk about the exercise a little bit more and, and some of the talking points um, regarding exercise in terms of, you know, their arms and wrists and just kind of that upper body strength. Can you, can you talk about some of the benefits of the exercise? Well, uh, it was pointed out to us by a doctor of physical therapy that, um, you know, not only can you practice those uh, motions from sitting to standing to keep the upper body, you can also, as you're standing, you can actually use it while your caregiver's right there in, in that protective mode to lift, do leg lifts. And you can even do twist, you know, from left to right and, and just keep the body moving. Um, that, that was what was pointed out to us by a physical therapist. And I wanted to say too, uh, Lori, that um, we had one case where um, this man had already gotten to the point where this nursing home was having to use a lift to get him in and out of the bed. And um, they started using the foot bar walker in physical therapy with him, and he actually got better in the nursing home and got to where not only did he not need the lift anymore, he used the foot bar walker and he was walking with it and uh, doing quite well. And I've had other, other customers to say that their, that their loved one uh, just was giving up, that they absolutely were sick and tired of having their joints and things pulled and stretched and lifted. And this one lady ordered one and she said she went to the nursing home to take it to him to the nursing home. And he had already gone to bed early without even wanting to eat supper or anything. She said, I woke him up and I showed him what I had bought. And she said he turned around and got his old stiff body up and everything. And she said he pulled up and she said just, just a smile came on his face. You know, it was a, a revelation that he had something he could get up with now that he didn't have to be pulled on. So I guess that's, boy, is that the reward? <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that, that um, muscle memory is really important. I remember my mom, you know, she was pulled up in the Hoyer lift and, you know, the, uh, swung into bed and the whole nine yards and, you know, you don't need anything. So it's like, okay, I'm just along for the ride. You know, it's, they're going to decide where I need to be, when I need to be. And, you know, it's, it's kind of sad. To my knowledge, there wasn't anything different. I would have loved to have had something like this. What is sad to me, too, is, um, you know, people do spend a lot of time and a lot of um, effort to get educated to do the physical therapy jobs and things that they do. And uh, we, we ran into actually people that would say, oh, no, no, we don't. We never teach anybody to pull up on a walker. Well, of course you don't but you teach them to pull up on a pull bar and you will take a walker to a pull bar and let the patient pull up. And I think they just, some people just have that knee jerk reaction that you're just not going to pull on a walker, but ours is a foot bar walker and ours makes that a portable pull bar. And without the caregiver, it's just a walker. Yeah. It's not going to perform without that person that you were going to be wearing out or hurting their health or, you know, uh, something like that. We say it's a win-win because it makes lives better two at a time. You know, it, it helped Peggy 
as much as it helped George. And um, Now, I'm thinking that this was George. Um, my notes might not be correct, but didn't he have tremors? He had a central tremor also, but he didn't seem to shake as much once he would get up with the walker. Uh, it just made a lot of difference. I don't know what it was. I think that uh, in one way, the physical activity must have helped him because he had physical activity that he never could have before. Mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense. Go ahead, Nancy. I was going to say, I noticed about George that if he tried to get up on his own, like if he were using an arm or a table or something to, to push on, I think it put his muscles into some kind of stress. And, and it's almost like they went into spasms and I don't, I'm not a doctor, but it just seemed like to me that would make him tremor, but by the stress, whereas he would, if you, if you can show the video, it, it's like he would just reach out and he would just instantly just, he, he would get up so fast his muscles didn't even know they had worked, you know. <laughs> right to it, didn't he, Nancy? <laughs> yeah. yeah. He really took to it. Yeah, yeah, it just did wonders for both of us. So uh, let's just take a moment and uh, take a peek at, at George and Peggy and uh, utilizing the foot bar walker. Now, Peggy, I want to ask you about, you know, you were, you really feel like you were able to keep George home longer because of the yes. foot bar walker. And then finally, when I didn't have to put him in the Veterans Center, I was paying 4000 out of pocket per month. And so for almost the four years that I took care of him on my own, I saved about $192,000, Lori. It was, um, it was just revolutionized my care of him. and and of our finances too. It was amazing. Just wow. I can we can't sing its praises highly enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's a that's a big chunk of change there. You know, and everybody wants to stay home as long as they can. Um, but it has to be safe. And the foot bar walker made it safe. It made it empowering. I thank Nancy and Gary all the time for that fabulous invention they did for just for us at the time. So now I'm hoping it benefits a lot of other people. Jerry, anything that you want to add on, on what we've been talking about here? I think we've pretty well uh, covered everything. Uh, one thing that was talking about the uh, tremor that, that George had, I said something to, uh, I believe it was a therapist, and it was, it was somewhat explained to me that when someone tries to stand on their own, that the tremor has an opportunity to start to lock in. When they have a reason, in the example of uh, George trying to immediately stand up, it doesn't give time, as Nancy said, for this tremor to actually start. And I witnessed firsthand, I, I had tried to help George up several times. And we were visiting them actually on George and Peggy's 71st, I believe, wedding 70th, anniversary, 70th wedding anniversary. And uh, he had two grandsons and these, these guys are both, you know, nice, strong young men. And uh, I think Peggy had left the football walker in the car. She used it to get him into the house, but I think she left it in the car. Like so the two boys, he wanted to stand up out of his chair. He was sitting in a chair and uh, he decided he wanted to stand up. So they uh, tried to lift him under each arm. And when they started up with him, he went into a tremor and his tremor was so violent. He almost shook himself away from their grip. It was that violent. Mm -hmm. So Nancy happened to be there and pushed a straight back chair over and George sit down in the chair. What we noticed with the with the foot bar walker when he would use that, not only was the shaking not as violent, there was no sign of a tremor at all. There were cases where he would just stand up. Once he stood up and composed himself, you could see a little bit of the tremor kind of begin, but on the way up, it was it was almost non-existent. And that was pretty amazing to me. That's really interesting. But it makes sense because I mean just your your motor memory and, and your your mind knows how much work that is and how much stress that is. And, 
you know, and your muscles know what it takes, you know, to do that on your own. But then when you have something steady in it, it, you know, it, it changes all of that. It's amazing. What would you like for the future of the foot bar walker, Gary? I would say, if I could kind of wrap it up in a, in a nutshell, we want to see this help as many people as it possibly can, as far as what we would like to see. Uh, we're both retired. Uh, we know that uh, well, we were retired. <clears throat> and we know from just age that we don't have as long left as we, we have behind us already. But I would like to see it help as many people as possible. And I don't feel like we have the, the youth on our side anymore. So we feel like that maybe a, a company that has the capability and has the horsepower, I guess you might say, to make this happen, to help out in this endeavor. What we did, we realized when we started that we had legalities that had to be done. So the patenting process and the FDA process and the trademark process and all the, the insurancing and everything like that, we realized that had to be done. And we also realized when we approached a large company that we were lacking one thing, and that was proof of concept. So our endeavor was to do this with the intensity enough to prove the concept. And we're still somewhat in the middle of that, but we feel like that we have an appliance that absolutely works and that the concept is accepted. And we feel like we've, we've come a long way with it. And there's still the ways to come. And I know Nancy has some thoughts and I'd like for you know, her to share what she thinks about it. Well, I think you summed it up really pretty good. I, we, we have taken this whole thing on as a, a labor of love. Um, we, we absolutely uh, have seen God work in it with us when, when we would just think, well, this is just hopeless, then something else will happen to just kind of seem like another piece of the puzzle that just keeps us motivated and going. And, um, and we don't really know about tomorrow, but we feel like we know who holds tomorrow. And, um, and when we know that we've impacted people like Peggy and George and names that we won't go into, that's, that's priceless to us. But we know there are thousands and thousands of people just like them out there that we alone probably won't be able to, you know, do this, but, um, maybe some of your viewers or some of your contacts will be able to take this and really run with it the way we feel like it deserves and maybe bring the price down, you know, but we, we have just done it as a ministry and um, just with Peggy as your cheerleader, you just can't give up. Your team's just got to keep going. That's all we're going to say. <laughs> Well, and I'm, I'm thinking even just teaming up like with a, a nursing home or a memory care or even a rehab unit in a, in a local um, university might be willing to do a clinical trial and work with you, you know, on that. But again, you know, I'll do everything I can to spread the word because I, I physically have seen it, I, I've used it, and I, I, just, I, I just shake my head going, why wasn't this out here before? Uh, it just makes so much sense. And I can see it reducing injuries in healthcare and in families. And, you know, to be able to reduce the stress of a person using it and the guilt of them feeling that someone else might get hurt helping them, it, you know, if you, can, if you can eliminate that, that's huge. That is, that is just such a huge, huge factor. Um, you know, it's all about, you know, care should all be about dignity and respect. And I think the foot bar walker, you know, gives that back to, to both sides. I, I always question giving statistics, but I read that 70% of caregivers over the age of 70 die before their patient does. Now, uh, I read that and uh, I, I can't tell you exactly where I read it, but I also know that we actually were told that our item was a luxury item for the caregiver. There's to me that that's not an insult. That is a great thing because it's great that everything is geared toward the patient in the medical field as it should be. 
But if you do not take care of your caregivers, you have more patients. And these nurses that have their careers tossed out the door because they lift on a patient wrong or CNAs, just people that just do the daily grunt work, you know, in nursing homes and assisted living homes and things like that, going in and out of rooms. If they just had something like this, no telling how many of them would prevent workman comp claims and just basically throw their careers just right out the door. So, you know, there's um, there's employers to think about, there's there's patients and there's caregivers. And um, we, we really want to get the word out that this is something that can benefit everybody. It isn't a luxury. It really is, uh, in my eyes, a solid need. Because even from a business standpoint, you know, you can take your your red line and look, and, you know, you don't want to get a flag from the health department because somebody got, you know, hurt. You don't want OSHA coming out checking on you. I mean, these are all things that stress, you know, executive directors out <clears throat> as well as their staff. <clears throat> Nobody wants to get hurt. Insurance rates can go up. And it just makes sense. Why would you not want to use something that is going to prevent injury and, and increase safety and increase dignity. You guys had used a, a statement when we talked before, Nancy, about preserving uh, life. You know, the football walker really preserves life, but I think it also preserves relationships too. You're, you're correct on the numbers. It's, uh, it's very common that the care partner passes or gets seriously injured and isn't able to take care of their loved one. And right. with the cost of everything nowadays, and the government's trying to keep costs down, this is something they really need to look at um, to preserve the cost and, and, and allow people to live where they want to live. Most of them want to live at home, and not everybody can. But even if it can be reduced in terms of how long they have to live someplace else, it is preserving their relationship, their dignity, and their finances, and their health on both sides. Um, that's, a, that's a big thing that we need to look at. So if you're interested in the Foot Bar Walker, you can go to their website, which is thefootbarwalker.com, or you can call them at 731-924-4444. That's 731-924-4444 and they ship um, free to 48 uh, of our states. During COVID, you know, their factory and showroom will only be open by appointment only, but you can, you can work all that out. Uh, they have great videos that you can look at and see and brochures. Again, I wholeheartedly um, endorse this. I, I just think it's absolutely wonderful. And, and I don't do that very often where I come out and say that. But this, to me, is like a no-brainer. It's just a no-brainer. And it makes a lot, a lot of sense. So for someone who is interested in maybe expanding their business or wants to get into another business, you know, reach out to uh, Gary and Nancy and maybe help get this out. If you're a researcher and think, wow, this is a cool idea, or maybe you're an occupational therapist and says, <laughs> Uh, give me a couple of these and let's see let's see what we can find from a from a data standpoint to help give you that proof of concept you know the way we get things done is we work together i just think that's real simple go ahead nancy lori i would like to find a better vector that would make the walkers gary has made every walker hundreds of walkers i mean this it's almost like a <laughs> impossible what is the song what makes the little old ant think she can move the rubber tree plant well we don't know what we were doing but <laughs> here we are <laughs> <It's really fabulous. laughs> well you know i think i think every great idea comes from a person who cares well, you know who sees a need and says that. we can do better you know we can fix that and so what a blessing that you guys were friends and that you saw the need and, um, you know, Peggy, you are just a joy and uh, probably the, the best raving fan any company could ever have. Can't thank you enough for doing this. And I just hope that 
many people will see what a blessing it is because it certainly was for me and for George. Bless his heart, he got to be home much longer than I ever thought he would. So thank you so much. Hello, I'm Deborah Meggs. Uh, we have this, this football walker for my husband. We could not make it without it. He would already be in a nursing home if we did not have it. I just can't say enough good things about it. He can, I stand on the, the brake and, and he pulls himself up, which he was not able to do before. My shoulders had gotten such bad condition. I'm gonna have to have surgery on both of my shoulders and my back was getting in bad shape. With this, he can pull himself up. He just loves it and I love it. And I wish that everybody that is a caregiver that has to take care of anybody with any problems could have one of these. It is well, well worth it. We have been so proud of it. And um, my husband has a, a, a fear of falling. And with this, he just does so good with it. And I would just recommend that anybody who is a caregiver that has to help anybody in your family, that this would be what they need. I did not want my husband to go to the nursing home. It would just break his heart if he had to go to the nursing home. And with this, it, it is wonderful, just wonderful. Well, thank you all for spending time with us today. And again, you can go to their website, thefootbarwalker.com. That's thefootbarwalker.com. Thanks everybody. If you have any questions or comments, you can always go to Alzheimer Speaks and um, check out all of our other resources as well. Have a wonderful week. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. It's time to rethink, renew, and reimagine retirement. Hey, everybody. Jared Sebesta here, host of Retire Repurposed. Now, this podcast is about the non-financial parts of retirement, which many times can be even more challenging than the financial. We believe retirement is not the end, rather the beginning of what could be the most impactful, purposeful, and fulfilling season of a person's life. So don't retire. Become repurposed. To listen now, search Retire Repurpose on your favorite podcast platform, Senior Resource, or Life Audio.